Welcome back to Calvary on this wonderful Wednesday. Uh, this is number two in four installments of some wonderful Wednesday shorts that I'm presenting on some themes and music of Advent. Uh, tonight, I wanted to talk about two different things. Uh, the first thing is that uh, in Advent, there's a, a little change in some of the service music that we sing during the Eucharist. And one of those things is at the very beginning, and we call it a Trisagion. Now, that's a very strange and funny word. Uh, and I thought we'd talk a little bit about what a Trisagion is and where it comes from. Most of throughout history, the language of the church was Latin. Uh, and only after a certain number of centuries did the church start to celebrate uh, the Mass in the vernacular or the common tongue of wherever Mass was celebrated. And only in the 1960s did the Roman Catholic Church in the United States adopt English as its main language for the Mass. But a lot of our musical roots uh, and language roots come from other places, uh, and that would be the Eastern Church or Eastern Rite or Eastern Orthodox or Eastern Catholic Churches. Uh, such as in Lent, when we sing a Kyrie, or the Lord have mercy, that text does not have a Latin root, it has a Greek root. Now, just like with uh, the Kyrie, the Trisagion has some Greek and Eastern roots. Now, Trisagion means thrice holy. Now, in the text, and if you want to look at it, it's S102 in the hymnal. We'll hear it every Sunday in Lent. Uh, the text is holy God, Holy and Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Uh, now, that is sung three times because in the tradition of the Eastern Church, everything that can be sung is sung, and everything is always sung or said three times. They're very big on Trinitarian theology in the Eastern Church. That's a big musical and um, liturgical practice in all Eastern churches. Is that If it's going to be done, it's going to be done three times. And that's why we sing it three times, and that's where the Trisagion comes from. It means thrice holy, and it comes from the Eastern churches. The other thing I wanted to talk about, of course, was the second Sunday of Advent. We were introduced to a new character this week, John the Baptist. Uh, now, one of the hymns that's suggested for both this past Sunday and this upcoming Sunday is uh, Hark a Thrilling Voice is Sounding. Now, this isn't a hymn I have traditionally selected, and of course, we didn't. there's too many hymns to fit into a, certain, a virtual service uh, with our current situation, so right now we're just doing two different hymns. But I wanted to um, have everybody sing along with this hymn, and it talks a lot about the character of John the Baptist and what, and, and what his message is. Uh, and of course, the text will go scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Uh, I hope you'll join in. I'll play the melody once. There are some markings in this score, so I think it's a hymn you might already know. But I'll play through the melody once on its own, and then we'll get right to it. That's uh, Hark a Thrilling Voice is Sounding, and I believe it is hymn 59. Sorry, I had to take a look. I hope you sing along.
Thank you for joining in this evening for my second Wonderful Wednesday short. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to sharing it with you again next week.